Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.dev and devnursery.com. And again, make sure to follow me on Twitter, listen to my podcast, and uh, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. It'd be much appreciated. Um, but with that, what I want to talk about today is first data relationships and data modeling, and then kind of taking that knowledge and then applying it into uh, Mongoose JS. So first we have to think about sort of how you want data modeled. The importance of it is you have to think through like not just how the, you're going to use the data now, but how you will use it in the future. So for example, I could create a data model like something like this, where basically it's a movie model. And in that movie model, we have the name of the movie, we have the director of the movie, and then maybe we have actors, which is an array of actors. Okay. And we'll leave it at that for now, and maybe a year. Now, this is fine. I could build this, and maybe this is like an array field in a database or something. But the problem is, what if the actor, let's say Brad Pitt, is in several different movies? So now that, that, that string of Brad Pitt is now listed in several different entries. So I'm basically, from a storage standpoint, I'm replicating that data over and over again. And what happened if Brad Pitt changes his name and he becomes Chad Pitt? Well, I have to go make sure I update each one of those individual movies. Okay, on top of it, I'm not capturing any other information other than just the name. Okay, so there's a lack of information that I'm missing. Okay, um, or and two, repetition of the data when I do this. So this is referred to as sort of a denormalized view of my data, where basically all the data is just sort of in one thing, one entity. Okay, so what we would probably want to do is denormalize the um, normalize the data, which means different things should kind of be in their own tables. Okay, so essentially what happened is that what we probably do was create another model called actor. You know, that would have like name. Okay, we'll just mention that it has an ID. Okay, name, age, etc. Okay. And basically what this field would do is that instead of it, this field would just really be the an array of IDs for the actors that are in that movie. Okay, so basically what I can then do is I can do a search for, you know, all the actors in that movie. Okay, but the problem is an actor can be in many movies. And so this would normally be sort of what's called a one-to-many relationship. So basically, well, depends how you do this. It's, this would normally be sort of like a one-to-many relationship. So assuming, let's pretend there's no such thing as an array field for a moment, okay? So in this case, I can only really store, um, let's say one actor or something, okay? But really, many actors are in many movies, so this kind of skips ahead, so let me not do that. Let's put aside the actor piece for a moment. We're gonna come back to that one. Let's do the director, because there usually is one director per movie. Okay. So in my journey to denormalize my data, I might also create a director model. Okay. And in that case, this director field would just be the ID that matches the director in my director data. Okay. So basically the movie collection or table doesn't store any information about the director. It just stores the ID of the director. And then we can use that ID to find that director in the director, uh, that's called a one to uh, many relationship. So a director can be a director in many movies, but every movie has one director. Okay, not always true, but truth today. Okay, so that's a one to many relationship. Now actors though, there's often many actors in a movie and many movies that an actor is in. So in that case, that would be what's called a many to many relationship movie. So then generally what happens here is that this actors field wouldn't exist. Okay. Instead, what we would do is we would create another data model called movie actor, let's say. And what this does is it has two properties. Well, I mean, there's the ID of the relationship. Then there's going to be a movie ID and an actor ID. So for every every movie that this actor is in, there's going to be an entry under movie actors where it's going to be that movie ID with their ID. 
for every actor that's in this movie, there's going to be an entry in this movie actor table. And essentially they link up based on a movie ID. Okay, and this links up based on actor ID. So now if I want to know, hey, what are the different actors that are in this movie? I would then, then search this collection or table for every entry that has a matching movie ID and then, you know, take those IDs there and go fetch the data from actors. Okay, that's how you would execute a many-to-many -many relationship. If I wanted to find all the movies that the actor is in, I would first find all the entries in here that have the right actor ID and then go search for the movies that have those IDs. Okay, and the beauty of this is, one, you're not replicating the data. So if I were to update Brad Pitt here, it doesn't matter how many movies he's in, that update's going to reflect for all of them. Also, I'm not storing that same data. And it's more easy for me to store additional data like name, age, and other things that are specific to the director, specific to the actor. And then again, I can relate that to other places where that might matter. So I might have like, you know, uh, awards. Okay. And, you know, depending on, you know, we'll say these are director awards. So these are awards for directors. Okay, so every award will have an ID. And then the winner will be the ID of a director. So see, now I can reuse that director model and say, okay, hey, the director that won is the one whose ID matches. And I can start joining all these different data models to create the data that I need. But it makes my data much more flexible. It makes it much more easier for the end user to be able to use the data in different ways. Now, it does require a little bit more thinking because all your data is not just bundled together. But you're able to use more data in a more sort of logical way. I, of course, like I'd want to go, you know, learn about the director. I'd go look at the directors. If I want to learn about the, a specific movie, I go look at the movies. And then these pieces of data relate or basically point to each other. Okay, so that's... And sort of planning this out and thinking this through is referred to as data modeling. Okay, basically figuring out, hey, what are my data models? Okay. There's a lot more to data modeling, but this gives you sort of the basic idea. So generally it depends on what you're doing. So again, we're talking about normalizing data, you know, later on this, that normally I want to normalize data for my operational system because, you know, in my application, I might be, you know, adding a movie, adding an actor. So I don't need to update all, you know, I don't need to find all the information all the time. If I'm adding an actor, I don't need to add all this information for movies. So it makes sense to kind of keep all of these separate. Later on, you might be doing analytics and moving that data into other systems. In that case, generally, you're going to want to denormalize the data. The reason being is that joining all this data together for analytical purposes, when you're joining every record for everything, can get pr across several different tables or collections, can get really expensive and take a really long time when you're running analytics on really large data sets. So then it makes more and more sense to just kind of have it as one big table so that way you don't you can skip that joining step. Um, but that's on the analytics side and that's not always the case. But again, just to kind of get you thinking about data modeling, it's like there's no sort of, sometimes you denormalize, sometimes you normalize, sometimes you want everything in one big table, sometimes you want them in all these small little tables. But now that we kind of understand the thought process of thinking through how our data connects, we can then use Mongoose when we're, doing, when we're working with Mongo to model our data better. So we'll do a couple examples. Let's try that whole movie example. Okay, so I'm going to create, we'll say, I'm gonna do all the models in one file. So we'll call this a uh, movie models.js. Okay, I'm gonna import mongoose. So const mongoose. Actually, I'll just copy that from my person file here. Save time. Oop. <coughs> there we go. Okay. So first, let's create that movie model. Okay, so we're going to say, hey, const movie schema. Equals a new schema. And we're just going to keep this simple. Again, there's a name of a movie. So that's a string. Okay, um, and we'll leave it at that for now. Okay, and then we'll create the model. 
uh, const movie um, const movie equals uh, model movie okay uh, movie Oh, movie schema. Okay, so there's like my, my movie model. Now let's say we want to create, there's only one director per movie. There's a couple different ways you can approach this. Okay, one thing that you can do in Mongo that you can't always necessarily do in relational databases is I could just nest the model. So I could create the director model. So const director schema equals new schema okay director schema we're going to say hey uh, a director has a name which is a string an age which is a number and if i want to say hey every movie should have a director i could just nest that schema right in there so i can just say hey every director should match the director schema. Okay, and that'll actually create a nested object. Okay, so instead of having a separate collection, it actually just puts it right in the movie, which depending on what it is, like generally that's fine if there's only one thing and it doesn't repeat very regularly. Uh, I think this isn't necessarily a bad way to do things. Um, but again, if you are repeating the same information, um, you do run into the issue where um, like this is technically faster to pull up the data because again you don't have to go fetch the data from another collection but there is a maximum size per document so if you have like many of a thing like many things then generally that can run into a problem because you're storing this overall if I keep adding actors to a movie eventually that document is going to be too big because there is a document size limit in Mongo so um, keep that in mind. So now what I'm going to do here is make a new file called moviequery.js. Okay, and what I'm going to do is um, const require const mongoose equals require mongoose. Actually, really, I want to grab the one that I have in my connection file. And then I want to say const, oh, I never exported it. So let me go back to my movie models. And what I want to do is export module.exports. There's gonna be multiple things I'll end up exporting from here. So I'm gonna wrap them in an object and movie will be one of those things in that object. Okay. So in that case, what I'm gonna do here, not here, movie query, where is it? Movie query const movie equals require dot slash movie models. The reason being is that this is going to return, again, require is going to return whatever I exported. And again, what I re exported was an object with movie in it. So since require is going to return the object, not movie, is going to require the object that has movie inside of it. I'm then going to use destructuring just to pull that one thing out of it. So this will just pull a movie right directly out of it. Wonderful. Okay. So then I'm going to wrap my code in a mongoose connection event. So that way I can wait till the database actually opens up. Okay. Mongoose.connection. Okay. Dot on. When the connection opens, then I want all this other stuff to happen. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a movie. Okay, movie.create. Okay, and I'm going to make this async so we can use the sync await. Okay, movie equals. And essentially, what I'd have to do is I would sit there and say, okay, hey, there's a name of the movie, some movie. Okay, and then there's a director, and then the director would have to be an object that matches the schema. So it would have to have a name, the director, and I forgot the comma over here, so let me fix that real quick. 
Okay, name, uh, some director, age 50. So technically this object matches a schema, okay? Basically it matches movie because it has a property of name and director, okay? And director matches the director schema because it has the name and age. Okay, if we go back to our models, like that's what it has, name and age, name director. Okay, so now when I create that, that should create a movie and we can console.log that movie. Okay, and let's just run that. Node movie query. Okay, let's see what the number is not defined. Oops, somewhere in my model I messed up. That should be uppercase number. There we go. Hmm, did I forget to await? I think I forgot to await. Okay, movie query, I think I did. Yep, I forgot to await. There we go, let's try that again. Okay, and you see like it creates the object and notice that the director is treated as its own document. So notice how it gets its own separate ID from the ID of the movie. Okay, so even though I'm not saving the nested document, in its separate collection, it is, it is still treated as a separate document. Again, notice the different um, IDs. Okay, so that's what happens when you nest. Okay, um, now what if I wanted to update this movie? I could take the, I would take the ID of the movie, copy. Okay, and then what I would do is I would change this to await find, uh, movie.find by ID. I would pass it the ID. This should return that movie. So then I would actually just make my, once I have that movie object, I would then just make my edits to it. So I would just say, hey, the movie.director.name is now going to equal Alex Merced. I'm just changing, I'm just arbitrarily changing the name of the movie or the name of the director. And then what I would do is I would save and update the movie using movie.save. And this I would want to use an await because that's a database operation. So I want to await that. But again, you can see that I made a change to the movie. So if I console log the movie, you'll see that it is different. Okay, so let me just shut off the previous server there. Turn it back on. Okay, and you see I did change the name. Okay, and then that's been committed to the database. And just to confirm that it's been committed to the database, let's do this. Movies. Okay. And that's fine. We'll just find it and we'll just console log it. Just to confirm that if I do another search for it, that the change is still there. Okay, so that's how you would work with that. Okay, which, you know, so essentially an array of stuff would still be an array of stuff. You know, just be like working with any object in JavaScript and then you would save your changes after you're done manipulating the object. So not too bad. Um, but again, you're just putting everything in one collection, um, not necessarily the normal way of modeling things. Okay, another way of modeling things, let's do it with a, using the actor story. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the actor model. So I'm gonna say, hey, const actor schema equals a new schema. And also name string, age number. Okay, so there's gonna be the actor schema. Okay, and then we're gonna create an actor model const actor equals model actor movie schema. Mm. 
now there's two ways I could do this. I could do it through the through like the, having the middle, uh, and I, I will show you both ways. Um, so first we're going to show you a way that Mongo lets you do it. Mongo has some is a little bit more flexible, so you can actually just sit there and say that hey, an actor has been in several movies, which is going to be an array. an array and then here you would put in the type of object so you say type object I think it's like um, mongoose dot type dot types dot object ID okay and then if I'm right it's a, it's a ref Uh, see my, do, 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 do. This I'm going to need to quickly look up. I know it's either ref or model, but I always like to make sure before I go too far. So mongoose populate. Okay, so I can see here. Yep, object. Oh, so it is ref. Okay, so there's the what I'm looking for there. Okay, and that's schema dot types. Okay, so. This should be schema dot types, and then ref should be the name of the model. So this would be the movie model. It has to match this string. So the idea is I'm referring. This refers. This ref refers to what model I'm talking about. Okay, let me put a comma there. Okay, so an actor has been in. Mo notice the square brackets mean it's an array. So it's an array of references to movies. So I this move, actor has been in multiple movies, and I can then go back to like this movie, and I can add actors, and do the same thing. I can say, hey, this movie, um, you know, type is of schema dot object id dot uh, oops, that's actually nope dot types dot object id. Okay, and actually this should be in an object. So let me fix that. Okay, and then again, there's the ref property, which is going to be pointing towards actor. Okay, because again, it's got to match this. Okay, so basically it's saying, hey, yeah, this movie has a bunch of different actors, and this would just be the IDs, of an array of IDs for different actors, because that's what this object ID is, is referring to this ID property. Okay. So there we go. And again, this should say actor schema here. And then we bring in the actor model. So now I can go back here. Let me go update now. I want to pull out actor from that. Okay. So in this case, we know that I have this movie here. So I'm just gonna grab that ID. So we just work with that existing movie. And what I can be like, okay, first I'm gonna create an actor. Const actor equals, you know, um, await actor dot create. And then we're gonna create um, an actor whose name is, we'll just keep using Brad Pitt, why not? And age, whatever. We just say 66. Okay, cool. So that creates the actor. Okay, but right now I don't have a movie for the actor to be associated with. Okay, so then what I would do is before that I would probably go find the movie, const movie equals await movie dot find by ID. Pass in the ID. Okay. And then what I can do over here is when I specify movies, I can now pass an array that has the current movie in it. Okay, this is a start. And if I had other movies, I can go look up all those movies, put them in that array to populate it. Okay. And that should be, there should be a colon there. Okay. Cool. Now, after I do that, I would want to update the movie so that way the movie has the actor in it. So the movie is going to have a property called um, actors, 
which is an array. So I can just do dot push and push the actor in it. And then what I can do is I can save the movie. Movie.save. Again, that's going to be asynchronous. And then we'll console log both so you can see what the result is. Okay. Console.log. Um, movie and actor. Okay, so let's try this out. So see right here we have the movie. So we can see because it has that array of actors and see in that array of actors is Brad Pitt. Okay. Good. And then if I go see Brad Pitt here, so here's the object for Brad Pitt, the actor, you can see in the list of movies, he has this movie. Okay, so movie in the list of movies. Wonderful. Okay, so that's that. Now let's say I go back and I just look up that movie now. Okay, let me just console.log movie. After we've already made those changes, what does it look like if I just query it right now? Okay. Now notice in this time when it looks at the actors array, it doesn't show all of Brad Pitt's information anymore. It just shows the array with the object ID inside of it. Okay. Well, that doesn't help. Okay. We want to be able to, to, um, use this. Okay. So the trick is whenever you're looking for something that has like one of these properties, what you can do is you can use this populate function. So when I do the find by ID and I find the movie, I do dot populate, okay? And then dot populate, what you do is you pass the name of the property you want to populate, which in this case is actors. So I want to populate this property in the movie schema actors. So then what it does, it checks the schema and it says, hey, in the schema, that property called actors is referring to the actor model so it'll then take those IDs and then go query the actor model. Okay, so that's essentially how the chain of things work. So now, if I run this code again, see now actors has Brad Pitt in it. Okay, so keep that in mind when you want to pop. So this this makes it really easy to populate that data. Okay, um, so which is probably like an ideal way to do it using Mongoose JS, but you just have to kind of keep in mind how to think about it. Okay. And you have to make sure you kind of make all those changes to associate, every, associate everything with where it needs to be. Okay, it isn't going to automatically kind of create those associations. I have to go sit there and say, hey, this movie is, I had to, to manually say, hey, this movie has this actor and this actor has this movie. Okay, in their data. But once I have that all mapped out, then I can just easily populate that data this way. And it'll just automatically grab that data from that other collection pretty easily for me. Now I could have done it in a slightly different way. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut this down. I am gonna change the database name. Okay, so that way it's like a blank database. So I'm gonna just change this to database one. It's kind of like a reset. Okay, and then what I wanna do is I'm gonna head back to my movie models. Instead, I could have taken that approach in your more traditional data modeling, where instead of relying on what mongoose.js provides for me, I could just model it traditionally with a third model for like actor movies. Okay, so in that case, I would just get rid of this movies property. Okay, and instead, I would just rely on const movie actor. So we'll say, hey, movie actor schema. And this is probably still the better way to do it. Now, the more I think about it, uh, new schema, because we could still leverage the whole populate functionality, but instead of creating two separate arrays in these two schemas, we just have this third schema and I would just say, Hey, you know, uh, movie, which will be of type and actually it's not going to be an array. So we don't need the array. It's just going to be an object of type schema dot types dot object ID. And then the ref will be to the movie model and then we'll create an actor property okay where basically it is 
um, type schema dot types dot object ID and then the ref is actor. Okay, let me make sure I put a comma between each of these properties in this object. Good. Okay, and that's the schema there. And then I can create another model, const movie actor equals model movie actor, which uses the movie actor schema. Okay, and then we would then put that over here. Okay, cool. So now what I'm going to do is we'll go back to movie query. I want to make sure I go grab movie actor now that that's being imported. And I'm going to create some stuff. So I'm going to create some movies. Movie.create. Okay. And you know what I'm going to do is to save us some time and generate some, some data. What I'm going to do is, okay, um, I'm going to copy these schemas, so the actor and movie schema. Okay, and we can take advantage of the world of LLMs we live in. Head over to bard.google.com. Okay, let me then use my normal, just to save time, new window. Okay, sure. Okay, bar.google.com. Okay, I'm saying using these two Mongo, Mo mongoose models, can you give me two arrays each with three items for each model. Okay, I copied the model in there. I will then hit this and let Google Bard do the thinking for this because I am too a little exhausted to be thinking through three movies. So there we go, we got three movies and we got three actors, perfect. Okay, so I wanna do is copy the movies one first. All I need is the array. Okay, and then now what I can do here, movie query, I can say, hey, movies.create, and again, await, movie.create, um, and then replace this array with the array that we just got from there. So it's going to create all three movies because I can pass an array and it'll create each movie individually. Okay, and then what I can do is... Um, do copy the actors. So let me go back over here and copy the actors. So then that would be await actor dot create. Okay. And actually, I'm going to want these. I want to save these because I am going to have to associate them with each other. So const. Um, const movies, const actors. So all the actors will be here. All the movies will be in movies. And then what I want to do is create, I will loop over that. So I'm going to say, hey, for, do a quick for each loop. So I'll do, they both should have three entries. So let me just save this just like for spacing purposes. Okay. So I'm going to say movies, dot for each since I know both of them should have three movies in their array I can leverage for each okay and I can just say hey movie index okay and then for each movie what I want to do is await movie actor dot create okay and then essentially it should be movie well actually for the pass it an object and it's going to be with that movie and then the actor will equal actors at that index okay which should be the equivalent movie 
Again, Morgan, well, was Morgan Freeman in the Shawshank Redemption? Yes. Was Al Pacino in The Godfather? Yes. Christian Bale in The Dark Knight? Yes. Thank you, Google. You thought this through for me. Okay. And let me just see what it's complaining about. Oh, I have to make this as an async function. Okay. So that should go away in a second. There we go. So basically what's going to happen is that on each loop, it's going to create that movie actor entry. Okay. Wonderful. So now what I can do is um, do that. And then what I can do is after we're done with that, we'll do movies or actually actor movie dot find. And I want to find all the actor movies. And then what I want to do is dot populate. Okay. I can't remember if I can do an array. I think, yeah, I think I can pass an array of strings here. So let's try that out first. Okay. So then I can pass here and say, hey, I want to populate actor and movie when you populate those actor movies. Okay. And then const results equals, there we go. Okay, so I'm where I made a mistake. Actor movie dot populate actor movie. Actor oh it's movie actor, that's why. Movie actor. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, it took some time or it's taking some time. Seems to be stuck somewhere. Oh, I never console log the results, that's why. Console.log results. And now we're gonna see it twice because I'm running this whole thing twice, but it's fine. Okay. Oh, and I forgot to await movie actors. Okay. And I can tell because I'm seeing the whole sort of like promise object so this is like the event the, the the query object not the actual uh, the object i expected so that tells me oh the query didn't complete itself so yeah so now i run this again and now we see what i was waiting for okay and you can see now when i look at this array here each array equals one movie and it shows me the movie and the actor that it's associated with so now let's say I want to look up all the actors. Okay. Um, everyone who was inside the Godfather. Okay. What I could do down here, and let me just delete, comment out all this rest of this stuff. Because we don't need to add all that over again. I've added it like three times now. We can say, hey, movie actor find. And this time I can use like find by ID. Okay, and it'll find the base on this ID and still populate the actor and movie properties. Okay. But this time it'll only give me the movies that have, which in this case was no. So let me think about that. Oh, I think I grabbed the wrong ID. So let's see here, the ID of the dark. Um, oh, I see what I did. Yep, so if I want to find the dark knight, then what I really want to do is this. Okay, so I do want find, because I'm not looking for the ID of the movie actor, I'm looking for the ID of the movie. So what I'd want to do is this. Find me the movie, or the one where the movie is ID is this. Okay, so find me the one, any, any entry where the movie ID is that, and then populate the two fields. So now if I do this, I should get all the movie, all the actors for The Dark Knight, which is just gonna be Christian Bale three times. But theoretically, if I had added a bunch, all the actors, and then made sure that they were all associated with that movie, and see where I get Christian Bale, The Dark Knight, I guess it was only added once. Okay. Oh, it's because I, every time I added The Dark Knight over again, so The Dark Knight had a unique ID all three times I added it, so that's why. But theoretically, I would add each movie once 
So there's only one ID for the movie. And then basically all the actors for that movie would be associated with that ID in this movie actor column table. And then that's, I could use that to get all the movies. So that one table would allow me to get all the movies for a particular actor, all the actors for a particular movie. Where I can count how many movies. It basically becomes a much more easier tool for doing the same thing. So it's, you're, we're still leveraging that ref populate relationship, but just much easier having that third table. It may seem a little bit more complicated in the example because it's easier for you to imagine it, but um, that would be how you would do that. But again, that's kind of how you would leverage relationships if you want to have multiple, like users related to this, whatnot. And again, you don't even have to. Like I could um, to show an, another example. Okay. Um, I could not. So uh, well, let me see here. Which one do I want to do? We'll, we'll, we will... What I could do is I could just manually kind of do the same thing where basically I just say, hey, like for example, let's say the director schema and we create a director model, const director equals model director um, or actually, actually, I, 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 I that'll overcomplicate it. What I've done in the past is that like, let's say for like username, I usually set up like the, a username for a user as a unique property. So then what I would do is just tag every other model would have a property of username where I would put the, the, the username of that unique user. So then I was able to search that particular collection for, you know, all blogs for that belong to that username for all, um, to do's that belong to that username. That's another approach you can take. Um, that one is not leveraging the populate ref relationship. That's just me manually doing a search for, Hey, give me all the ones that have this matching username. Um, but it all works. The point is like building the way for you to get the data you need and modeling in a way that's going to give you the most flexible data going forward. But again, a lot of what we learned in this video can then also be applied to relational databases and other types of databases because modeling is just a way you think about your data, which is independent of how the data is stored and where you store it. Okay. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.dev. Have a great day and enjoy.